Hello and welcome to Wally Bois. Well in this video I want to show you how I sharpen my carpenter's axe. And no, it's not like any old axe. No, it's not the kind of axe you'd use for, well, light felling work or splitting the logs for your fire. No, no, not at all. This particular axe has a thin blade, as you can see. It's not like a typical felling axe, such as this one over here, which has a much thicker blade. You wouldn't necessarily use that for, well, carpentry work. No. Um, but also there's another version of this as well for splitting logs, which is a Merlin, which is much wider still. But we're not talking about those today. No, we're talking about my carpenter's axe and that we want to give this a nice, super sharp edge to the point where you can even shave the hair off the back of your hands. Oh, you never regions if you must, but I don't recommend it. No, it sounds dangerous. Oh, no, don't do it. No, no, that's a bad idea. Don't know even why I mentioned it, no. So, what we're going to do first of all, we need to clean this up. Um, so we've got smooth faces either side. Because that can affect, cause friction and affect the, well, efficiency of the blade. Now, I love this whole thing. I've had this a good many years and there's also a good many years before that has that been in use. When I got it, the handle uh, was all kind of manky and what have you. So I had to refit the handle um, and um, you know, just tidy it up and sharpen it. But it needs doing again. Well, generally, I sharpen as I go with it, but I haven't actually been using it at, like I normally would do, especially over the winter, because I normally use this outside, you see, on my chopping block and maybe doing a bit of spoon work, etc. A bit of spooning with my axe. Ooh, seriously dangerous. So, what I do, tend to do is I place that into my vice, like so. As you can see, my weird arrangement, but it works. You might just want to put it in a metalwork and vice or clamp it down somehow. But it gives me, um, well, something to hold it by and put a bit of weight behind it so it doesn't move about. I've also got these rubber mats down here so it doesn't slide around my bench. Now, first of all, I'm going to be using this. And no, it hasn't got a grinding wheel in it. It has a flapper wheel in it, which is like a sanding wheel. Ideal for this job because it's pretty, well, it's not very aggressive. A grinding wheel like this will just create a huge amount of extra work to do with your sharpness. Just don't do it. Stick one of these in, or even a sand and disc is better than a grinding wheel. Yeah, bad idea, grinding wheels, because you create loads of deep gouges and they have to be removed. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to use this to clean up the faces. Now I've removed... The surface rust off there. I'm not too worried about the other areas. I'm not trying to make it pretty. I want to make it function, functioning, functioning. Yeah, useful. <laughs> and now I'm going to use this angle grinder with the sanding disc in again, just to do a primary grind on this edge to take away any notches that I might have made by using this particular tool. Maybe I've hit a stone or a nail or something I shouldn't have done. Now, we will be wary of, is it getting hot? If it is, spray a bit of water on it. You will see a little steam coming off. It isn't that hot, because I can touch it. It's not that hot at all. So that, that isn't going to change the temper of the steel. But if it gets too hot, you'll, you'll damage your steel. And what you have to do is, you'll have to harden it again by heating up to cherry red and dunking it in water or oil. Cooking oil will do. Now, you may notice one thing what I'm doing is, I'm starting here with the uh, angle grinder with the flat wheel in um, and then I bring it to the edge because you don't want to just sharpen here. If you do that, what you'll do is you'll end up making it more blunt. Effectively, we want to remove the fat material here where it's thicker at the same time because as we remove material here, effectively we're making the edge fatter. So we need to remove a bit of that at the same time. That's one side done. We haven't sharpened it yet. All I'm doing is just prepping it for sharpening. Because tools like this tend to get left out in the damp and what have you. Um, and I'm a bit, of a bit of a bugger for not wrapping them up in oil with an old rag or something. No. I tend to, I'm going to use it tomorrow. And then I don't. And then it ends up all pitted. So if you look on this face here. 
that's all like, well, dirty and rusty like. Now if you look at that face now, it's all shiny and lovely using that flap oil. And it's not full of deep gouges. Now I think this is a French, um, I've had this before I came to France, but I think it's actually a French design, it is. Uh, can't actually read it. Beverouge, Beverouge or something, something red. Uh, Stand fort here. I'm not sure what it says. It's not the the stamping is not that clear. Um, not anymore. Anyway, that's no hair or there. Now, if you run fingers over this side, it feels rough. If you run fingers over this side, it's smooth. It reduces friction. So when you're using it, you not you haven't got all this resi extra res resistance for which you want to remove. So now we're going to do the other face. Simply done. It is simply done. Okay, so let's get ready for that one. Okay. So I polished the side. That's quite smooth now. And now I'm going to do the primary grind. Not hot enough to cause a problem. So I've polished both sides of the blade and now, you see the steam coming off of that, but it isn't actually that hot. So I haven't, yeah, ideally I should have dunked that in some water, which I do have some water over here. Now these are what you might use if you're on site to sharpen it. Um, as you're using it, it would be these water stones such as this, uh, canoe stone, etc. And you'd create your sharpener. Now, I know I've said it before that I tend to use. Well, diamond sharpeners. I prefer to use diamond sharpeners because they maintain their shape. Um, and for a surface like this one, uh, I'd rather use something that's flat than something that's round, such as this, or maybe a cigar type. Um, it's like a, yeah, <laughs> sharpener. Um, yeah, I prefer to use a flat stone or even an oil stone, but a flat stone could be these small um, DMTs, such as these diamond sharpeners here, which I just dropped on the floor. <laughs> as you do, or um, I could use something a little bit more serious in the sense of an oil stone such as what's in this box, like an India stone, and then you'd literally just pair it like so. In fact, let me show you that as well. So I'd use an oil stone such as this one here, and this is an India stone, smooth side up. If you want, you know, if you want to start with a decent edge, um, and then you'd use an oil on this. Now I tend to use a thin oil for which I can't see anywhere around here, so I'm going to use some thin oil that I have over here. There we go. And I'll have to place a bit like that. That's not the oil I normally use, but that'll do. <laughs> now we don't need to mount this in anything like, you know, such as this vice here for this purpose. Let's move this out of the way. Now I don't like using water sharp water whetstones on anything that's not flat. I love using whetstones on oh, uh, stuff like uh, plain irons or chisels and stuff like that even, but not on stuff that isn't, yeah, you just damage them, you just, you just ruin your whetstones. Not because they can't do a good job, because they do, but you damage them and you constantly have to remove a lot of material and flatten a new whetstone. So it's a sweeping action and a pulling action with your um, axe, or carpenter's axe in this case, and what you try to do is you start down low, like so, and you bring it up until you can feel that you're actually sharpening the edge. And every so often, just check that you are, and not just constantly doing the flats. That's fine. And you bring it around like so. so. That's one way of doing it, and you do that on both faces. So you re reverse it around and do, let's move that out of the way before I knock it. Um, and then you do the same on this face as well, and you're pulling it and towards you and across at the same time. Quite similar to what you do with a, a Bowie knife or something like that really, I suppose. And you'll, you'll be creating a burr. So as you, sh oh, getting really sharp now. As you sharpen one face, you'll effectively do the other face and you'll bend the burr back. So it's like a little, what we call a wire edge. 
and that wire edge needs to be removed and you can do that with a strop um, or you can do it with an axe or you use my hand like this yeah and what I'm doing is I'm folding that wire edge backwards and forwards until it falls off so that's the same how I do it when I do my plain irons even wide chisels not thin chisels because you cut yourself really easily This is getting really sharp now, actually. So you see the motion I'm doing, it's just a, a pull and a stroke. You do that in both directions. Now once you do one side, you pull it around, you can feel the resistance on the other face because you've bent that burr over in the other direction. And you have to keep your backs and forth until you remove it that way, or use you can use cut and compact um, <laughs> honing paste such as this here with a leather strop or you can just use your hand like so now don't do this unless you've got a bit of experience with it it's a motion like so and like so so fold it backwards back one way so and fold it back the other way so i've got a bit of wood over here i'll just see how sharp that is i have to shave the hair test in it shave the hair so is this seasoned wood it's not green Anything I would say that probably needs a bit of hollow, more of a hollow grind in it instead of a flat grind on the face, on the edge side, on the primary grind. <laughs> I'll get my words out in a minute. And then can bring it around like that until you're satisfied. You can go that way if you want, it really matter. As long as you're pulling and stroking at the same time, so you're actually getting the full full width of the blade all at the same. Don't don't be tempted to do that. Yeah, no, just that motion. Just keep doing that until you get the edge that you're looking for. Now, I get in fine with it with these stones here or the green one which I just dropped on the floor. Like that, that one. It's a so what basically it's a whetstone, a diamond whetstone, there's a DMT, and I can then put it into there or whatever. I'd like to put it somewhere you can hold it, but you still got to pull away from the blade. So it's like so this sort of motion. So don't forget that, otherwise what you end up doing, you end up hurting yourself, which you don't want to do. Yeah, you get cut and then you bleed. So I'm pulling it away from the edge. That way you're pulling your hand away from the edge, you see. If you do this, you'll get carried away and eventually you'll slice your skin um, down to the bone probably because it is flipping sharp. Do the same in the opposite direction. And this one's a really fine one. I think it's about 3,000 grit, this one, I think. I might be wrong, but I think it's about 3,000 grit. It feels very fine anyway. That does feel very sharp. You've got to wash that burr that you don't end up folding the burr over and it stays folded over because then it'll just be blunt. So yeah, you need to hone it afterwards, such as yeah, using your hand up and doing so. It shaves hair. And I keep doing that, but I don't think you can actually see, can you? Let's bring a little bit more on that. If you hear that, that's where the burr is. So you're trying to remove that by bending it back and forth. It's not like you've got a nail in a piece of wood. You keep bending one way, then the other. You create metal fatigue and it falls off. That's what you're doing when you're doing your stropping, like so. Yep, that's doing it. Yep, that's cutting. Ooh, ow. <laughs> cutting and scraping at the same time. So that, anyway, that's how I sharpen my carpenter's axe. And as you can see, that is plenty sharp enough. And that's seasoned timber. I know it's a bit old pine, but it's seasoned. Green timber is the best one to use if you're doing anything like spoon work or whatever. You're not spooning. If you're making a spoon. Uh, you know, tight spoon. Green wood, that's what you should use. Birch is quite good for um, for spoon spoon making. But anyway, that's how I sharpen my carpenter's axe. And it's um all by hand, no jigs. I've never used any jigs because when you use these things, quite often you use them in the field where you don't have the facilities of having jigs and stuff like that, no. So you've got to learn how to do it by hand and muscle memory. Just practice.
Practice, practice, practice. If you find you're making a hash of it, a hash of it, well then just <laughs> uh, just start again. Don't worry about it, just start again. You know, you've got plenty of meat there to play with. Eventually you'll get it sharp. So anyway, thank you for watching. Don't forget to click like and subscribe and maybe a little bell icon because you get one fuzzy feeling in your pocket every time I upload another video. But also, why not check out our merchandise store, for which there is links in the description down below. Also, we have t-shirts and stuff, funny ones. That woodwork. Yeah. And if you've got any ideas for designs, leave that in the comments down below. And even, well, maybe ideas for other videos. Maybe you have a question. Why don't you leave that in the comments down below? Maybe. Anyway, it's time for me to go, because I think I've got to go and walk the dogs, you know. So either that, I've got to cut the grass. I think I'll walk the dogs. Ta-ta.